Hey guys, it's Ty and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing another recent reads and I've had a lot of highs and a lot of lows with a lot of these books that I'm going to be talking about today. I have quite a few DNFs and that is where we are going to start. So I have three books that I DNFed. The first one being The Princess of Las Vegas. I actually received this as an ARC from NetGalley. And so in this one, it takes place in Las Vegas. And we're following this woman who does impersonations of Princess Diana. She works at a casino. I think she puts on shows like several nights a week. And we get a lot of information about how much she is like obsessed with Princess Diana. Then in the prologue, um, so this isn't a spoiler, we learn that one of the owners of the casino was actually murdered. And so we get more information about how this main character is obsessed with Princess Diana. And then we learn that the main character's sister is going to be moving to Las Vegas with her new boyfriend and like newly adopted daughter. And then we get more information about how this main character is obsessed with Princess Diana. I read this on my Kindle and I got 18% of the way through before I put it down, but I was extremely bored. Nothing about this story was like grabbing my attention. I did not care about how much this woman was uh, obsessed with Princess Diana. I mean, it's clear that she liked her enough to want to impersonate her, but I just did not need like all of the background about all the things that she knows about Princess Diana. In 18% of the way in, we weren't really focused on like this murder. It was brought up, but it wasn't really mentioned or talked about a lot. And then the book at some point is like related to cryptocurrency, which is something that I don't really understand or know a lot about. And within like the 18% that I got through, it was mentioned a couple of times, but when I was thinking about DNFing it, I went to some people's reviews on Goodreads and they were saying how much the book just started talking about cryptocurrency and I'm not interested. I don't really care about it. Um, I don't want to learn about it while I'm trying to read a mystery thriller. So I unfortunately had to put this down. However, if this is a book <laughs> that sounds good to you or it was something that you were interested in, by all means, pick it up. But it has already been released. It was released on March 26th. So it is out there in the world for you to purchase. The next book that I had to DNF is The Other People by CJ Tudor. This is another adult like mystery thriller. This is one that I've had sitting on my shelves for the longest time. So I decided to finally pick it up and it wasn't a good experience. So we are following this man by the name of Gabe. Gabe and he is driving down the street one night when he's like following this car and realizes there's a little girl in the back of the car. I can't remember like if she says help or something but the little girl grabs his attention and he realizes that it's his daughter that is driving off into the night with this unknown car and so he later learns that something in fact did happen to his uh daughter and his wife and so we like go back to that was in the past so then we fast forward to the present with him still looking for his daughter because he just doesn't believe uh that whatever he was told about what happened to his daughter was true because he knows that he saw her being driven off into this car and so we're also following another character's perspective where um she this woman is on the run with her daughter and then we're following another perspective where this other lady has ties with this lady that is on the run with her daughter and might have ties to what happened to Gabe's daughter. I DNF this on page 136, chapter 26. I just was not pulled into the story. I was not interested in any of the characters and like how they were tied to each other. I mean, I think the title basically gives it away on, in regards to what happened, but this just was not catching my attention. I did try to listen to this on audio and every time I went to pick it up, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to listen to it. That's all that I got. Like I just, I, it was boring to me. I think this was like really popular a couple of years ago, hence the reason why I picked it up. 
but yeah it just unfortunately was just not a book that was holding my attention then the last book that i dnf'd and this one actually hurt me to dnf because i was really looking forward to it and this is blood like magic by lacelle sanberry this is a young adult sci-fi fantasy it's more fantasy but it has like some sci-fi elements in it but we're following this girl voya and she comes from a family of witches and so i think she's around like 16 years old and now it's her turn to become a witch and she is getting prepared for her calling and during the calling like their ancestors come like an ancestor is chosen for her and they give her a task and then if she completes the task then she will be able to get some sort of power and officially become a witch and so she does go through the calling she gets assigned her ancestor and she's given her task and her task is to basically fall in love with someone and then destroy them. And so that's as far as I got. I got 186 pages into this before I put it down. And it was a struggle, honestly, to get that far. It was about 100 pages before the plot even started. It was a very slow start. And I feel like that is the consensus across the board because when I was going through reviews, everybody said that it was an extremely slow start, but eventually it picks up. It just wasn't picking up fast enough for me hence the reason why I had to DNF. It took a while for the plot to start and in the beginning we were just getting so many info dumps about the witches, how they work, their magic, her family in particular. I also just kind of felt like the main character was slightly annoying because she is one of those people that are very indecisive. And when she was getting her task, like she was extremely nervous about it, which is understandable because if you don't successfully complete your task and you won't get your magic. And with her, if she doesn't complete her task, then all of the magic will be taken away from her family. So she's really indecisive and doesn't know like what she would do and she keeps asking everybody, should I do it, should I not do it? And she's like that with other things. She just can't make up her mind. It was kind of frustrating to read because I was just like, girl, just pick something, do it or don't do it. Um, and it was kind of like the other characters in here were getting annoyed with her as well. But yeah, the story just wasn't grabbing me. I did like the their, like, their magic and like the story being bobbing around witches but because it was just so slow by the time the plot did start I was just no longer interested and I did look at spoilers for this one because I was curious to know what was going to happen with her task and if she actually completed it and I was not happy with how this ended so I'm actually happy that I just put this down and did not continue but I do plan on reading this author's other books. I have Delicious Monsters which is a young adult horror and then she has a newer release that came out. I can't think of the name but I also plan to read that and I've heard good things about those books so unfortunately this one just did not work for me. So moving on to my two star reads and I only have one but this is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This is a adult fiction dystopian mystery story. I have done a full spoilery review over the book as well as the movie that is on Netflix. So if you guys have not checked that out, I will have that video linked down below in case you guys are interested. But in this one, we are following this family. So we have Amanda and Clay and their two children and they are just trying to take a break from life. And they rent out this Airbnb like on the outskirts of New York City. Um, they wanted to go somewhere and be secluded and just kind of relax. But the first night that they get there, they are surprised by the arrival of GH and his wife, Ruth, who said they were coming home from a concert and then there was like a blackout in New York. So he decided to come back to his house. Amanda is a little skeptical because she just doesn't believe that these black people could afford the type of house that they're in but clay convinces her to go ahead and let them stay and so while they're staying there they start to realize that something might be happening in new york as well as the rest of the world because amanda's seen a couple of alerts on her cell phone even though eventually while they're there like the wi-fi goes out there's 
They can't watch TV. Like they have no connection to the outside world. And so we are just watching them slowly spiral and trying to figure out what is going on out there in the world. I gave this two stars, like I said. This was just very boring. I was not a fan of like any of the characters, especially the character of Amanda, because I just did not like the type of comment she was making about this black couple. So I was not a fan of Amanda and not enough was being told to us in regards to like what was happening in the outside world. So this made the story very slow. We're literally just following these people in this house, um, following their thoughts about what might be going on, but not knowing what is going on. I think there are like, maybe like a moment or two where we get told kind of what's going on, but it wasn't really enough to keep my interest in this story. And the only reason why I went ahead and finished it was because I was doing that video. So this was not the book for me. I think this was definitely better told um, visually so that you could see what was going on in the world, but reading it just fell a little flat for me. So moving into my three star reads. The first one is another arc that I received from NetGalley. That is Heart Still Beating by Brooke Archer. This is a YA dystopian romance. At the time that I'm filming this, the book is not out. But by the time you see this video, the book will be out in case you guys are interested. But this one follows our two main characters. We have Mara and Rory, and they were friends basically before the world decided to end. And a virus swept through. Um, it, it created what they called ticks, and ticks were then going out and, you know, feeding on other people and turning other people into ticks. And so at the start of the story, we learn that our main character, Mara, was technically a tick. And she was living in a facility with other ticks, but now they are considered the altered because we learned that they are given this like medicine called dibucidin that was preventing the virus from like attacking their mind and turning them into ticks so it was like suppressing it and so technically they're still dead but they won't attack people so <laughs> they've been injected with this medicine it's an injection that they have to get like every day to keep like the tick suppressed in their mind so that they're not killing everybody. They decided that they are going to start like this resettlement program because since they've been giving these people these injections for so long and have determined that they are not harmful, they want to um, put them back into the, what population there is left in this world. And so people in this world are no longer living like on the mainland, they are living on islands. And they're living on islands because the ticks can't come out to them. So Mara is being put with a family, which is her godparents, and which is uh, the parents of her friend Rory. And so we learn very early on that when she goes back to her family, that there is like some history with this family, especially once she became a tick. Um, there's a lot of grief that everybody is dealing with because of course they have all lost loved ones and they're kind of like putting the blame on each other on why certain loved ones have passed. And then we learn that before Mara was turned and she and Rory were friends, they kind of started having feelings for each other, but they never really expressed them. And so while we're watching Mara kind of be integrated back into the population, we were also watching them kind of rebuild this relationship, even though in the beginning, Rory was very upset that Mara was coming to stay with them. And then we're also watching how people on this island don't really like the altered and they're trying to like blame them for things that has taken place on the island. And so I thought this was a pretty solid read. I enjoyed learning about uh, the world and what happened when the virus hit because throughout the story we're getting like these flashback scenes. And I also like learning about the family and how they were affected by the virus and then watching Mara and Rory's relationship kind of like blossom over the course of the story because it started off very strained. However, I was not a big fan of the ending. Parts of the story was very brutal, um, especially when they were like talking about the ticks and describing different like fight scenes, I guess, with the ticks and how like people were being treated on this island. I thought it was 
like I said, very brutal and very like realistic. Like I could actually see something like this happening if a virus like that <laughs> ever took over the world. But I just thought the ending wrapped up a little too nicely. I wish the author just would have leaned more into the world and how brutal it was when it came to the ending. But I do think this was a very solid read and I would check this out if you guys are interested. So the next three star book that I have here is Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. This is a adult romance. So we're following our main character Eve and she learns she's pregnant from a one night stand and she tells her best friend Willa who is not supportive in the way that Eve thought she would be because Eve is like one of those people that is like if I have children great if I don't great but her best friend Willa is someone that really really wants to have children and she's kind of jealous that Eve ends up pregnant and so because she's not getting the support from Willa and then we learn that the child's father isn't really going to be as supportive as she would like she gets some support from an unexpected person which is Shep who is Willa's younger brother. And so throughout this story, we are watching Eve as she's going through each trimester. I believe the story is broken up into each of her trimesters. And we're watching how she's trying to deal with the relationship with her best friend, figure out how they're gonna, how she's gonna co-parent with the guy she got pregnant by, and then how Shep is always just kind of saving the day. I thought this was a really cute story. I have not read any romances yet, I believe, that have dealt with like an unexpected pre pregnancy. So this was kind of uh refreshing to see and it was really nice to see how uh Shep was always there for her he was really attentive he paid attention to like all of her needs because she might mention like oh I need this thing and it might have been like an offhand comment but then all of a sudden Shep would show up with this thing that she said she needed and I just love seeing how supportive he was in this situation when he certainly did not have to be and I just loved Shep as a character I loved every interaction that Shep and our main character Eve had however I I wish that we would have gotten different POVs in this, whether that be from Shep or whether it be from the guy that she got pregnant by because he was struggling uh, throughout this story because when she told him that she was pregnant, he was actually in a relationship. And so then he had to tell his girlfriend who didn't take that news well. And then he was kind of struggling with how much he wanted to be in this child's life. So I think it would have been really interesting to get a POV from him and see all the things that he was struggling with. But again, I gave this three stars. I did enjoy it. So moving on to my last three books and all three of these are four star books. And we're going to start with Hood Feminism Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. This is a nonfiction. This is my third nonfiction of the year and I'm really proud of myself because I've mentioned this before, but I'm trying to read more nonfiction. And luckily, the nonfiction that I have been picking up, I have really been enjoying. So this one is just talking about uh, feminism and how uh, when we think about feminism, it doesn't talk about basic needs for women like needing shelter, uh, needing education for their children, things like that, and how people of color do not get support from uh, white women in the ways that we should. Um, I like that the story really went into detail about like just like the basic needs and how that relates to feminism. And then I really like how this author took personal situations that she had and incorporated it into the story. This is a nonfiction that I have been seeing floating around everywhere and um i see it like at the top of people's list of their favorite like nonfiction, and i would have to agree this was really good it was hard to like put down um once i really got sucked into it and sucked into um what this author was trying to say so this is a nonfiction that i would definitely highly recommend so then my next four star read is listen for the lie by amy tentera this is a adult mystery thriller and in this one we are following our main character lucy i believe yes 
Lucy. And she has been like, or years ago, she was accused of killing her best friend Savvy, but they never had proof because during that time they were coming home from a wedding. Somewhere in there, Savvy was murdered. And then they found Lucy walking down the street, like covered in Savvy's blood. So she has always been suspected of killing Savvy, but of course, she has no memory of that night and what happened to her best friend. So fast forward a few years, um, Lucy is just living her life. She has a boyfriend. She's trying to move on from the situation. She no longer lives in her small Texas town anymore. And then she gets notified that this podcaster is coming into town. He's a true crime podcaster. His podcast is called Listen for the Lie. And he is trying to like reopen up Savvy's case to see what actually happened to her on the night of the wedding. And so Lucy gets fired from her job because now they have gotten wind that she was like wrapped up in this murder. So she gets let go from her job. And so she decides to go back home for... Uh, her grandmother's birthday party and see what she can do about this podcaster trying to open up this case. So I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this way more than I thought I was going to. So in my opinion, this does nothing new. You know, there's a podcast element, there's a stereotypical character that has lost her memory, but I just think it all kind of works well for this story. Um, I really enjoyed the podcast element. I highly suggest that if you're going to pick this up that you do listen to this on audio because it sounds just like a podcast and there are like different narrators uh, throughout the interviews uh, that take place on the podcast and then there's actually a reason for the podcast so it's not just throwing a podcast element in the story for the sake of having a podcast element in the story and then I also really like the character of um, Lucy because she has like these intrusive thoughts where all of a sudden she'll be like talking to somebody and will start having these images of her like killing them and so she's in therapy for that but that happens a lot to her throughout the story and she's like really sarcastic when she talks to people she keeps bringing up the murder and she brings them she brings it up during like conversations where she probably shouldn't be talking about it but she just like makes other people feel uncomfortable and then I liked her grandmother so her grandmother actually kind of like coaxed her to come back to Texas to deal with like this whole podcast situation and her grandmother's personality is also like very sarcastic she's very witty she's very funny and at, at certain points it just doesn't really feel like they're taking this murder seriously but it just kind of worked um I don't think the ending of this was like the twist was all that like surprising um at a certain point I think you can pretty pretty much figure out where the story was going but I just like the journey of getting there and I really enjoyed the characters and this is the first time that I've actually not the first time but it's rare that I'm like reading a mystery thriller for the characters I'm just really kind of reading them to figure out what happened what was the thing that happened but in this one I just really enjoyed the characters so I had a fun time with this one. Again, if you are going to pick this up, I would suggest the audiobook for this to get the full experience. The last book that I'm going to talk about and my last four star read, and this was a shock to me. So this is The Fury by Alex Michaelides. This is a, another adult mystery thriller and he is a very popular author. So if you guys remember, he's the one that wrote The Silent Patient, which I absolutely loved. And he also wrote the maidens which is a hit or miss with people i thought that book was fine i didn't love it i didn't hate it it was just okay but going into this one i was seeing more negative reviews than positive so my expectations for this went down the drain by the time i actually picked it up and i waited a long time to pick it up because i was nervous about how i was going to feel about it because this is one of my most anticipated reads for the year However, I had a fun time with this, but I do not think everybody is going to gel with this. So in this one, we are following this group of people. Our main character is Elliot and Elliot is like telling the story. So he's, I guess, what you would consider like breaking the fourth wall where he's like, I'm going to tell you the story of what happened on this island type of thing. So Elliot and his friend Lana 
and some other people go to this Greek island for kind of like a getaway and then someone ends up murdered and Elliot is telling you the story of what happened on this island and I just really enjoyed it. I at a certain point you realize that Elliot is a bit of an unreliable narrator and that really worked for me. I have uh, seen people's reviews that that is not something that they really enjoy but it was something that worked for me. There was a point in this story where it just turned super chaotic. You could not really believe what was going on. Certain scenes like replayed themselves over again so you got to see them from different perspectives and I really enjoyed that. I however did not enjoy the ending. I am still confused on what exactly happened at the end of this book. It does reference the maidens. It also references um, the silent patient, but I just loved like the chaotic nature of this story. Again, it is going to work for some people. It is probably not going to work for a lot of others, but I think that if you were interested in this pick it up. You, It might surprise you like it surprised me because I really enjoyed this. So that is all that I have for you guys. If you have read any of these, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments, but I will see you guys next time. Bye!